I hope you like Paila Marina. It's a fancy name for fish stew. We have discussed everything we need to discuss. We got tipping sticks. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're exploring the food and narcotics from Breaking Bad. As you can see, I've got a fresh batch of meth cooling off here. Oh. Oh, you want to see me break this, don't you? Probably be really satisfying for me to really go to town at it and you'd see all the cracked spiderweb like ice across a pond. Well, we'll get back to that later. Because for now, for an unprecedented third week in a row, we're making another form of bread. Dippin' sticks in this case, we're combining one packet of instant rye yeast with a quarter cup of dried non-fat milk, about 15 grams of sugar. I'm sorry, I know I'm combining weight with volume, but I didn't realize my buddy had a scale. A cup and a half of warm water and a teaspoon of kosher salt. We're gonna mix this together and let it get a little foamy over about three to five minutes before weighing out 500 grams of all-purpose flour and two tablespoons of vegetable oil that we're going to add to our yeasty milky mixture, affix dough hook, and knead on medium speed for about five to eight minutes until a smooth tacky ball of dough forms, to the amazement of any children that may be watching. Turn the dough out onto a lightly floured surface and begin to pat and stretch into a 9 by 13 inch rectangle. Or get at least as close as you can before adding a solid third of a cup of vegetable oil to the bottom of your 9 by 13 inch casserole and dump the dough inside. Pat it into the corners until it fills the bottom of the casserole and cover with plastic wrap. Don't worry if it doesn't perfectly fill the bottom of the casserole, we're going to let this thing rise for... <clears throat> uh, we're gonna let this... Huh. It's not working, so I guess we'll do it the old-fashioned way and actually let it rise for 60 to 90 minutes or until at least doubled in size. Then I'm going to use a bench scraper to cut into dipping sticks. Think the length and width of the ones that you'd get at pizza. That's what we're trying to emulate here, after all. Then we're going to spray them down with butter-flavored Pam. And then we're going to soak them for three hours in pure lard. I'm just kidding. We're going to make a spice mix out of one tablespoon onion powder, two tablespoons garlic powder, one tablespoon dried oregano, one tablespoon dried basil, a few good twists of freshly ground pepper, a small mountain of kosher salt, and a solid quarter cup of that crappy parmesan that you can get in a bottle. Give it a good mix by hand and sprinkle evenly over the top of your dipping sticks. Sprinkle a little bit more than you think you need. After all, is there anything sadder than getting an under-seasoned breadstick? Replacing these in a 475 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 to 20 minutes or until beautifully brown, golden, crisp, delicious. Set on a wire rack to cool, but not for too long because you want to eat these babies while they're warm. And these wouldn't be much of dipping sticks without some tomato sauce to dip them in. Now I know you're expecting me to make a quote-unquote good version of these, but soft, pillow breadsticks covered in garlic and processed cheese, what's not to like? In fact, I'm ashamed to say that these were so good and so scarily accurate that they too joined the Binging with Babish Clean Plate Club. I'm just kidding, I ate them with my dear friends, a family of three whose kitchen I'm using. Alright, now that we've got the family fun out of the way, it's time to make paella marina. This starts with a shellfish stock made from the shells of shrimp. The same exact stock we made from Principal Skinner's POW soup, but this has the addition of a ton of cilantro to give it its signature green color. After we've made and strained the stock and wiped our pot clean, we're going to heat up two tablespoons of vegetable oil into which we're going to dump one small chopped onion, letting that sweat a bit before starting to slice the garlic. Now, Gus specified that Walter sliced the garlic very thinly, but he didn't do a very good job, so I'm just going to emulate what he did. I swear, it's for accuracy, not because I'm lazy. Add that to the onions and saute for an additional minute before deglazing with a half cup of dry white wine and our seafood stock. Now, I am a notorious cilantro hater, but the extended cooking times of this stock really mellowed it out a lot. Add a little bit of water if necessary, because we need enough liquid to cook some cod, shrimp, sea scallops, and squid. And we're going to gently add to the pot. The cod is just going to fall apart, so just don't worry about that. These guys should stay in one piece, obviously. And we're going to add some mussels and a few manila clams. Cover up the whole affair with the lid of your pot and cook for five to eight minutes or until the clams and mussels have opened. Discard any that have not opened, season liberally with salt and freshly ground pepper, and as usual, we are seasoning to taste. Taste what you're making right at the end. Make sure it's seasoned properly before you serve it. Ladle some generous portions, making sure to include one of every different kind of seafood into a bowl and garnish with, you guessed it, cilantro. Now I can tell objectively that this is a tasty soup, but my senses are blinded by the presence of the devil's lettuce. So I recruited my friend as an unbiased, independent taste tester. He approves. Okay. Okay, last but not least, we are making meth, or candy meth. You thought I was going to make real meth? That's another show. We're combining one cup of water, four cups of sugar, one and a quarter cups light corn syrup, 
and a bit of blue food coloring, stirring only until all the sugar is dissolved and then ceasing stirring until the bubbling mixture reaches 300 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, you can add flavorants like cotton candy, the flavor that they used when they were making the show. And then you can pour it onto an aluminum baking sheet and let it cool completely about one hour, checking it with a laser temperature gun if you want to be a real Gail Bedecker about it. Now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for, a moment of silence, please. Oh yeah, that is satisfying. Break it up into lots and lots of tiny little pieces and of course scoop into a plastic drugs bag. It's the perfect dessert for your next Breaking Bad party if you want all your guests to get cavities and life-threatening cuts on the roofs of their mouths. Hey! Okay, that's good. We're good. Oh, oh man. hell yeah! Oh! Sick. That's the best thing I've ever done with my life. Oh man. Oh. Oh, that's so satisfying. Oh, I'm gonna make a gift of this. <laughs> oh, that is gotta be the sharpest thing in the known universe. You just got one little thing wrong to go. This is not meth. <laughs> it's candy. <laughs>